In 1981, an experiment was done with a group of eight men in their 70s and 80s who went to a monastery two hours north of Boston. The men were taking part in a five-day retreat where they were asked to pretend that they were young again, specifically 22 years younger than they were at the time. The retreat was organized by a team of researchers headed by Harvard psychologist, Ellen Langer, PhD, who would take another group of eight elderly men to the same place the following week. To those in the second group, they would reminisce about being 22 years younger, but would not be pretending that they were not their current age. When the first group of men arrived at the monastery, they found themselves surrounded by all sorts of environmental cues to help them recreate an earlier age. They flipped through old issues of Life and the Saturday Evening Post. They watched movies and television shows popular in 1959, and they listened to recordings of Perry Como and Nat King Cole on the radio. They talked about current events, such as Fidel Castro's rise to power in Cuba, Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev's visit to the United States, and even the feats of baseball star Mickey Mantle and boxing great Floyd Patterson. All of these elements were cleverly designed to help the men imagine that they were really 22 years younger. After each five-day retreat, the researchers took several measurements and compared them to those they'd taken before the start of the study. The bodies of the men from both groups were physiologically younger, structurally, as well as functionally. Although those in the first study group who pretended they were younger improved significantly more than the control group who merely reminisced. The researchers discovered improvements in height, weight, and movement. The men grew taller as their posture straightened and their joints became more flexible and their fingers lengthened as their arthritis diminished. Their eyesight and hearing got better. Their grip strength improved, their memory sharpened, and they scored better on tests of mental cognition with the first group improving their score by 63% compared to 4% for the control group. The men literally became younger in those five days, right in front of the researchers' eyes. Langer reported, I was playing touch football, but still football with these men, some of whom gave up their canes. The men were able to turn on the circuits in their brain that reminded them of who they had been 22 years ago. And then their body chemistry responded perfectly in sync with their minds. They didn't just feel younger, they physically became younger as evidenced by measurement after measurement. The change wasn't just in their minds, it was in their bodies. The reason this is able to happen is that our genes are not as immutable as we might think. And a wealth of research now exists to show that our attitude does indeed affect our health, including how long we live and how youthful we look. For example, the Mayo Clinic published a study in 2002 that followed 447 people for more than 30 years, showing that optimists were healthier physically and mentally. The word optimism literally means the best, suggesting that those folks focused their attention on the best future scenario. Optimists had fewer problems with daily activities. As a result of their physical health or their emotional state, they experienced less pain, felt more energetic, and had an easier time with social activities. They felt happier, calmer, and more peaceful most of the time. This came right on the heels of another Mayo Clinic study that followed more than 800 people for 30 years, showing that optimists lived longer than pessimists. Attitude had more of an influence on longevity than blood pressure, cholesterol levels, smoking, body weight, or level of exercise. But wait, this gets even more interesting. In his book, The Biology of Belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton spends a good amount of time discussing telomeres, which are a component of our DNA that is directly related to our lifespan and longevity. Basically, the length of the telomere extension determines how many times DNA can be copied. When frequent cell divisions deplete telomere extensions, subsequent copies of the DNA produce dysfunctional proteins. So the cell structure and components of our cells become weaker over time. When we are young, our telomere extensions are long. And as we go throughout life, they get shorter and shorter until eventually they run out. Our cells get all dysfunctional and we eventually die. For a really long time, it was believed that telomere length only went in one direction down and out. However, in recent decades, cell biologists have identified a special enzyme called telomerase, whose function it is to extend telomere length. Telomerase activity is the molecular equivalent of the fountain of youth because it replenishes telomeres that increase the vitality and reproductibility of stem cells. Telomerase activity enhances health and extends life. But there's a catch. Bruce Lipton explains how it is our life experiences which either stimulate or suppress telomerase activity. Childhood abuse, both verbal and physical, domestic violence, post-traumatic stress disorders, nutritional deficiencies, and simply a lack of love all inhibit telomerase activity. 
These factors contribute to the onset of disease and a shortened lifespan. In contrast, exercise, good nutrition, a positive outlook on life, living in happiness and gratitude, being in service and experiencing love, especially self-love, all enhance telomerase activity and promote a long and healthy life. In fact, a recent Canadian study found that breast cancer patients who were involved in a support group and mindfulness meditation preserved telomere length while the telomeres of a control group without those interventions became shorter. The primary influence controlling telomerase activity is the mind, which can be influenced by the programming we acquired before age seven. But that doesn't mean we can't rewrite that encoded information ourselves today, right now. It has a lot to do with the environment that we're creating for ourselves or the environments we find ourselves in. And all the same, our inner environment too. Our inner state of being, our thoughts, our beliefs, our habits, and the way we treat ourselves and those around us. All of these things play a massive role in how long we live. A lot of people want to reverse aging by applying ointment to the skin or taking anti-aging pills. As these stories and experiments demonstrate, the real journey begins within and everything else is a bonus. Now, as before, these stories and all of the research are documented thoroughly by the incredible Dr. Joe Dispenza in his book, You Are the Placebo. And I'm including his sources in the comments below of this video for anyone who's curious. However, if you really wanna go all the way with this and transform your reality is to explore his series on Gaia called Rewired. Gaia is no longer doing a free giveaway on the series, but I spoke with them the other day and wanted to help more people to see it. And so they've provided a link that you can use to watch anything on their platform for free for an entire week. With that trial, you can also binge some of Dr. Bruce Lipton's material on there too, such as his feature on inner evolution or the science of resilience featuring him and Greg Braden. Use the link below to get a free seven day trial to Gaia so that you can binge the rewired show and anything else on there that calls to you. Enjoy and thank you so much for watching.